uh, you know, fed Tom Kench. That that was something that they had been super successful on. Uh, I think they actually didn't even lose a single game with it. But to your point, um, again, with 100 Thieves, they've shown, even with Ryoma in the mid lane now, they're willing to pick Twisted Fate. And if you grab Tristana and put her bottom lane, for FBI, then that also opens you up for the Twisted Fate pick because Tristana is one of the best counters into Twisted Fate. And so you don't have to ban it away. You can take it early on in the draft yourself there and open up that possibility. Uh, with Olaf being the pick up here though, again, we always do look for stuff to support Olaf in in diving, you know, in in his frontline efforts so he doesn't fall off later. Uh, yep. You know, did take some stat nerfs uh, to the health pool that definitely you know helped in that in that area for this champion. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe we do have uh, some more supportive roles to try and actually beef up closer. Well, shout out to the scouting of Team Liquid, despite Hecarim being the globally most picked champion in League of Legends across every league that plays 11.5, 98% pick and ban rate on Hecarim. TL's like, you don't play it. You're an Olaf player. We can leave this one. We can pick it. Third pick, red side. It's not a problem. You're not stealing it away. You've got exactly one style closer. We can go ahead and play that one. Again, Zaya is outstanding into Olaf. It's a good draft so far. You force Monetrist, you play the Zaya anyway. It's going to look pretty happy. I, I do expect to see Hecarim here just because I think they want the priority jungler uh, or something else high priority like the Udyr, I guess, is, is sort of reasonable as well. But uh, this is going to be one of the very few drafts this patch where Hecarim is going to go untouched. Yeah, I mean, Santorin has been definitely one of the better Udyr players in, in the LCS thus far. He's had really good pathing. Um, controlling enemy camps as well. Uh, double Scuttle Crabs. I actually, that's a new stat I want to track for you, uh, is, is openings with double Scuttle Crabs. It's probably going to have to be manually tracked, um, but but I would definitely venture to say that Team Liquid Santorin uh, is definitely up there at the top of the LCS. No, yeah. you know, not not too, uh, not too surprising here for him. Solo lane bans start to come in though, since uh, bottom lane and jungle have been locked up for both of them. Taking yep. away some of the possible blinds here. You know, the Gragas basically, uh, you know, so, fine into everything <laughs> and still has good. I find this really interesting because the last game we just watched was blue side Camille, red side Gragas. And, and on the other side, like TL's like, actually on red side, we should ban Gragas because a blue team should pick it as the blind pick yeah. top laner. And he's like, ah, you've banned Gragas? Indeed, we should ban Camille since we can't pick Gragas against it. It's like, hmm. I wonder if this, PSM got the better top lane matchup in the last yeah. game. Well, I mean, th this is the more correct way to do it, Ex by the way. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, I'm just like... Tristan mm. Bay, uh, it looks like I also I also like that Team Liquid caught the Tristana opening up the Tristan Bait route for 100 Thieves here uh, deal. So, uh, you know, good job coaching staff here for TL. Uh, Jat finding the ban there, ban <laughs> taking that one away because even though they, they did, you know, sub out Demonte, they're still very willing to play that. We saw that in the sneak peek. Uh, champion select versus Immortals uh, yep. before they had to do the remake. Got some Malphite hovers back and forth. Uh, with Silas unbanned, I don't think you should be willing to do it. Uh, both teams have a front line. They don't need a Malphite, nor do they uh, need a not, like, worry it's, about playing a non-tank. So, like, there's no way you blind Malphite here unless I'm missing something. 100% is a meme shout out to Tactical okay. because Double Lift has been flaming Tactical uh, for his rocket jumps in. I think he let his uh, on rocket jump is a Malphite ultimate. So that's Got why it. they're memeing on the Malphite okay. here. Because uh, Tactical, it's legit here. Like he has been a psychopath with yeah. Tristana, getting caught out a bunch. Uh, a lot of front lines just on to play. Uh, yeah. With the Zaya, you you can only like hover so far forward with your feathers out with your ultimate. Mm -hmm. you, definitely doesn't have any you know, offensive properties built in there. Yeah. Is built into the champion that he's going to be safer now. A little bit, a little bit. I see my share <laughs> of flash forward R's from Zaya though. It's usually not okay. Yeah, great. yeah, yeah. But yeah. you're you're at least untargetable but, for a while. Like, yes, yes. It. And you have to burn flash. The cooldown on jumping in to kill yourself is a lot longer. So uh, still on on board this one. All right. So the Syndra comes through for Ryoma. No big surprises there. Tristana is going to the bottom side. Uh, I do like Leona, by the way, more than Nautilus overall. I think she's, uh, like, her lockdown against yeah. someone like Zaya is actually really outstanding. It's pretty hard to, I would say, like, it's hard to ult on Reflex to a Leona E, right? Um, you can ult afterwards, but she's still in melee range and just, like, stuns you with the shield anyway. So a lot of that combo can still work pretty nicely and force the cleanse out. Uh, so I kind of like the champion interactions. Works pretty well overall. 
Uh, obviously, you can't lock down a Gangplank too easily, a Zier can shuffle out and whatnot, but uh, still plenty of hard engage for under Thieves. Uh, they've still got Closer on his very comfortable Olaf, so he can like, just take all the farm and be a big mid-game threat. And you've got FBI on a big late-game carry. Like That looks like a normal Hunter Thieves comp to me. I like that you kind of touched on the Leona Nautilus thing because right before this game, uh, someone tweeted at me and yep. freaking tagged both of us and was like, what do you think is better? Is it is Leona Nautilus just better Nautilus? My, my rebuttal was going to be uh, that the Nautilus ultimate being a knockup instead, um, you know, you, you can't have, you know, tenacity doesn't help you there. Um, and, and that's actually a really prevalent in the game now uh, with, a, sure. with a lot of rune choices for tenacity. Um, and, and, you know, uh, that sort of thing. Plus you can't miss it. Point and click makes it easier for the dum-dums like me. Yep. Uh, either way, we are going to be on to the game of this one pretty soon. I will say though, Nautilus ultimate, it depends how it's coded because Nautilus ultimate after the knockup is still a stun. Uh, much like Alistair Q, there's actually a stun attached to it. I don't know if the stun starts counting at knockup or if it starts counting at landing. Because if it starts counting at knockup, tenacity is essentially fully powerful because you still delay the drop. Let me tell you, half. if you're buying tena tenacity against a Nautilus ultimate, for that explicit purpose, then sure. you're messing up because the knockup lasts long enough. Even if the the last little I mean, tiny so does an Alistair Q or a Leona stun. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying like sometimes it's still long enough so that you die. That's the only point I'm going uh -huh. for. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, they still have all these. Uh, you know, never mind. Uh, uh, the, no, the fire related emotes. Uh, oh. 100 thieves. Yeah, they're they're still left on their emote wheel, I guess. Ah, uh, yes, uh, from the uh, from the Immortals game. Mm, yeah. Yes, yes, I see. No invade though. Uh, thus far for Team Liquid. Uh, sweeper here for Huhi on Hundred Thieves though. So maybe they actually try something late. Ooh, looking for it. Sweeper will spot if there's a ward or a champion. Indeed, sees Core JJ. Much more of a play to be had, so out they go. We'll point out again, um, we, we had seen a, a really harsh increase of, or a stark increase of Phase Rush Alistair last year, and it's certainly a viable build. I'm not going to say it's wrong or anything, but we've seen some people go back to Aftershock. And the point I want to make is that pre-6, Phase Rush Alistair is very, 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 very squishy, and level 1 doesn't have a lot of uh, real tools to, to peel or really even engage. And so oftentimes you can see a lot of pressure against level 1 Phase Rush Alistair, which says, you know, Tris Leona going to have a lot of uh, early lane priority here. Uh, it will be Tactical and Core JJ. Almost always, they will leech for their team. Very, very rarely will they ever play for the lane instead of playing for Santorin. So on the back foot is TL's bot lane. We'll see if Hunter these get anything out of that as a result. Yeah, and then on the other side here, Closer is starting top side. So they're not setting up, um, you know, possible early pressure on the Gangplank. Not going to go up to someday to try and help out. Uh, with Alfari, as so many top laners have had a difficult time dealing with Alfari. Uh, and he actually is going to be looking towards the Tristana Leona lane. I love looking towards aggressive Tristana Leona lanes. It is a kill lane. Uh, who he goes in for the initiation. Step is slow. That's going to be the Q trade. stun. This is how strong this lane can be. Ignite is on as well for some decent damage. Tactical had heal, not cleanse. So you ignite if you think you might get the rest of the damage across. They don't quite kill him, but that is a really good engage. Pulverize buys a second, but. Level 2 comes in. It's a really good fight from FBI. Nicely weaving in the auto attacks. He, like, he was in turret range, but waited for the turret to auto the minion, then attack, and then dropped aggro before he got hit again. So that was really, really well played. Yeah, close. doesn't big, have one. One of the big things for this team, for 100 Thieves, has always been their setup on dives. And if you're jumping in, doing that aggressive play on bottom side, setting up for a possible dive, you already see Closer heading over there, over the ward. That's why I mentioned there's no sweeper there. Uh, and the ward does see allow Tactical to back off, but you get to deny some minions from Tactical. He's not even in experience range of the cannon as the yep. cannon goes down. Uh, and though they do come over with the sweeper, that's one of the things with this team. Always looking at these dives. When 100 Thieves were at their best, in the lock-in tournament at the beginning of spring, getting all these victories. It was proactive early uh -oh. dives off of lanes like this. Are you willing to flash for this one? Rocket jump forward. Not going to find the axe slow either, so they're only going to push. Ooh, they got the slow there from Tactical. Or sorry, from Closer. Decent damage. Yeah, I mean, he's not getting gold or XP, but oh my gosh, top side, there's a kill. All right, Alfari and Santorin said, you're going to dive bot. Guess what? We're going to dive top, and First Blood is going to save the lives of Team Liquid. Donate now, ccp.gg. All right, let's take a look at the 2v1. Someday, Mininar under tower. There's, yep. the, <laughs> there's no getting out of there. Uh, it comes right on in with the bear, uh, finishes it off with the Phoenix. Big kill onto Someday. Alfari has been crushing it in the top side. And I want to shout out that Ward by Raptors. 
Really, really good ward by Team Liquid. The ward by Raptors saw closer transition to bottom side. That gave them the alert that they were going for it. Good flash. Really, really low. Core's gonna flash to make sure the sun can happen. One more hit, not gonna get it. There we go. Nicely picked up there. Centaur gets the burn kill. Now, he's gotta run away as well, but Jensen has arrived and the kill's gonna come across. Team Liquid 3-0 to start out this game. The extra information. Information is everything in this game and Team Liquid are making the most of it. The early ward sees closer heading towards the bottom side. Tactical, Core JJ are able to survive while Santorin knows there's no possible answer to his gank on top side. They successfully get that one out. Then they get the counter kill chasing them out of the jungle as 100 Thieves stay around too long. No reset for them and it is just Team Liquid winning both sides of the map after that early, early success of FBI and Huhi. They still retain their giant CS lead down here. So FBI and Huhi's work has not gone unnoticed. He is rewarded for that. But the extra kills going to Team Liquid turn around so much of this early game plan from 100 Thieves. Centaurin is up a kill to assist in three camps. It's you know, bot lanes, I guess, a little sad because Tactical is zoned away, but to assist means it's no longsword to pickaxe. That's that's barely worse, to be honest. So Team Liquid got to feel real good about this 15 hour goldie they've got right now as someday can fight back a little bit against Alfari. But hey, you walked into a barrel chain. Sorry, someday, but you're not allowed to play this lane anymore. Yep, guess what? Mini Nar going to stay mini for a while, too. Santorin continues to keep pressure up on top side for Alfari. He's mining the most out of the extra gold here on the top side. Someday does still have flash because he uh, found himself to death last time. He knew. He's got to feel nervous. All right. He's not even going to find the slow on the Santorin. Bear stun's going to come across. Goodbye. Someday you're dead again. And closer. Not going to get uh, anything back as well. Feel like you should have left when you saw the Scryer's Bloom. You knew a jungler was there. Just run away. Yeah. I mean, they also saw him on the Tri Brush Ward. So yeah. I think their communication on 100 Thieves side, they were thinking. All right, Closer can get there in time. And that was, you know, maybe a second off for, for the timing of him trying to arrive and get the counter kill. But it seems like that was the idea. That was the call from them because they did, uh, you know, see him as he transitioned over. All right, well, bot lane, maybe still some attention as the item lead is still with FBI. The, uh, the support items don't really matter here. And the bush priority does go to 100 Thieves. So maybe Closer can get the bottom side, get a dragon and, and find something going on in the favor of 100. But... For now, it's Team Liquid, the only one making any good choices. I, I will say, the bot lane pressure was good. Like, they got a play out of it. They denied some farm. Like, that was actually fairly successful. But the counter punch has been better on Team Liquid. Yep, definitely. Definitely could have been more bottom side, 400 Thieves. Um, but good defensive measures taken, too. And, and we keep on mentioning the early ward, the vision, uh, you know, seeing and tracking closer is a big part of that. 100 Thieves are definitely you know, telegraph it a little bit uh, in how they want to play this. And with a top side start, good kind of deduction there from Team Liquid to be able to counter both sides. And Rage Bar building back up. Alfari a level ahead right now. You can see Mininar's XP bar at six, barely. Alfari seven comfortably. So it is it is a long road ahead for somebody to catch up in XP overall. And it might not happen this game, to be honest. Alfari feeling comfortable with his 20 CS lead. Played his steel cap pretty good against the double AD top jungle. The move speed, of course, helping get away from the Olaf as well. So that's going just fine. Santorin, I guess Closer has caught up in camp, so that's really good to, to farm well on the Olaf. But obviously, Santorin's gotten more done. Grabs the red buff. Going to just run around, get the vision, and make sure his lanes are all safe to keep the push going that they can. I will say, too, for 100 Thieves, that another area you can try and attack is the Syndra versus Azir matchup in mid lane. Post level 6 here, um, you know, there, there's plenty of opportunity for pressure there. This is the nerfed Azir. Jensen's rushed into Merc Tread, so he's trying to get that early tenacity to watch out for the stun combo. Well, let's see Centaurin. Can they get team champions over? I mean, Azir is here first. Syndra has to be second, and that means, yeah, Centaurin's going to be safe to make this playoff. Are you going to zone them out? I mean, good time to have top pressure, good time to have mid pressure. Last planet for the sneak, but they can still show up in time to defend it. Re-engage not going to be much either, so uh, well done. Jensen is able to grab the Herald himself, and of course, Azazir is able to get away. So well done by Team Liquid with having to send their bot lane over really in any way. Grab the Herald, no problems, but now FBI fighting Tactical. This is big damage, by the way. Tactical could die. One more auto, then he can ult. The summoner heal is going to be enough. The jump, the flash, the auto's not enough. Tactical just barely lives. FBI healed to get out of turret range. You could have just taken the freebie, the summoners, but... Ah, burns his entire summoner suite to maybe deny a minion wave. 
Yeah, I do like the opportunity. You know, he, he wants to take advantage of the level six, uh, you know, he's pushing, so Tactical doesn't have his ultimate yet. And trying to get those summoners out, can't quite clutch it, you know, does get a little bit baited by the extra heal there by Tactical, causing him to go flash in and heal himself as well. Someday though, under attack constantly. Big damage here. Someday only gets a little bit of a hop, and that means it's death number three. There's poor Nar, picked on and picked on and picked on. Easy kills for Altharian and Santorin. It's the little things, Freak. When you see that just movement from Santorin, walking away. Yeah, Udir, he doesn't have a lot of surprise moves he can do. Runs up, stuns you, but then just having the presence of mind, all right, walks back and around in a little circle so that someday can't hop on his head for the extra distance. Um, when, when all you can do is run around, it's important that you run around correctly. Let's yes. say that. Absolutely. Really, really well done right now. So top lane is just the most tragic right now. 400 Thieves. Gold lead, 2,500. Honestly, not as abysmal as you might expect for the kill difference. Still bad, don't get me wrong. Like, this is a pretty rough one, but uh, maybe the chance to come back. Tristana, of course, still farming pretty well. And now Team Liquid going to invade the bottom jungle here. Core JJ and Santorum put a ward down. Close going to start this red buff. And with who he playing nearby, looks like they're going to be able to defend this one. Santorum will knock a ward back down. And who he will yeah, play this one pretty nicely. Auto Q auto. Get the ward kill, get the control ward down as well. Hand the 30 gold off to Closer. So no kind of jungling. Pretty good ward clearing overall by Huhi. And so Cordia doesn't actually get that much deep vision. This game is going to go a long way towards shoring up uh, analyst predictions and, and opinions of Team Liquid heading into playoffs as well. With how controlled and successful these, these early game moves have, have been made, you know, gathering information, proper rotations over, countering these plays here from Hunter Thieves, and abusing uh, the top side while they have they have a lot of commitment towards bottom. These are all things that, you know, people have had this feeling of Team Liquid should have a better scoreline than they've had for most of Spring Split. Um, and, and they've made a, a lot of, uh, you know, mistakes in some of the games to, to have people, you know, kind of kind of question that. But rising right back up to the top of the standings just in time uh, for MSI qualifications and having a game like this versus another one of the top teams yep. will definitely go a long ways towards that. I think the one thing maybe still hanging over people's mind as far as doubt, uh, if they were going to doubt this team would, would be tactical. Um, but, uh, you know, the escapes here on bottom ha have definitely been clutched and he's the one with the, you know, Zaya Alistar end of this, uh, you know, Tristana Leona lane, which yep. uh, should have the aggressive look, so. All right, trade of blows. You can get the root, but the rocket jump for FBI is put up in time to make sure he doesn't die to that one. Cannon will be lost. Uh, nice by Tactical to kind of keep him away and make that one not go very well. Who he ward over the wall. Might find him his way into a fight before too long. Jensen will need to summon pretty soon. We'll get a couple of plates there. This gold will all go to the mid laner. Rift Herald plate gold is global to the summoner. Who he gonna make the walk back for Tactical? Gonna find the stun, find a little bit more. Has the OPD no flash, so Tactical could be attacked pretty heavily. Closer nearby as well. The root's only gonna land on a little bit. The flash follow is gonna guarantee the kill for Closer. And now Cordia J has flashed, he has ulted, and that means he's gonna walk away and stay alive. But at least finally, how did these get a kill on the board? Yeah, all the Hundred Thieves are praying for their bottom lane to carry this one. This spirit bomb of FBI and Huhi, they're gathering all of that will, all of that force towards the bottom side of the Hundred Thieves map here. And that is their hope for winning. Uh, you know, Tristana here for FBI does get to knock off some more turret plates after the kill too. So continue to look for these aggressive moves. They're basically just churning through tactical summoner spell and ultimate cooldowns here with constant pressure and continuing to look for these successful uh, engages for themselves. Yeah. One nice thing about Tristana, you saw how easy it was to knock that wave down. Trist can essentially pre-clear a big wave by stacking explosive charge at the right time as the wave reinforces. Around this point in time, you one-shot the casters. It takes like eight autos for the rest of it. And you can greed for plates that most other AD carries can't do. Like if you're Ash, you don't get this kind of recall timing while greeting the plate and getting the wave on time. So big benefit to Trist means Kraken Slayer plus boots are in for FBI. This is a huge power spike, but it's the only one the 100 Thieves have. They don't have much going on anywhere else on the map. So it's like, well, Tactical's on Essence Reaver, but he can also kill turret plates. So, you know, good luck dueling him, which FBI yeah. can, but every other lane's gonna lose. Uh, the, the this power spike is uh, is a little power bump for them. Uh, you know he's he's level nine Tristana does have 
have his mythic, but the rest of the map for Team Liquid is under control. And guess what? This is a gangplank with the two level lead. He's already level 11, can send his ultimate over there. So even though your Tristana is your power point, there's a level two gangplank ultimate that can drop down on your head if you get too aggressive. And they force the flash at Hatchkill. Core JJ has ult, but no flash. The slow is not enough to chase it down, though. They knew Alistair would be up. There's really no upside to this play. It would be over chasing with Udyr coming over and Azir coming over. So uh, ult for flash is still a good trade, though. Again, as you mentioned, Kobe, they're just cycling the cooldowns. Tatsuko running the heal instead of the cleanse means he's got to burn the, the big cooldowns to get away from just CC. Team Liquid are happy to have Tactical. Just keep spending those, <laughs> though. They're like, all right. Uh, you know, keep uh, keep spending them, stay alive, keep trying to absorb as best you can because the rest of the squad taking care of business as Centaurin picks up Rift Herald number two. Um, and they even actually, actually they rotated Alfari up to top. Maybe they want, uh, you know, to actually throw some pressure at the 100 Thieves winning lane. There is sufficient warding here by 100 Thieves for FBI and Huhi to know that they should not be you know, taking any over-aggressive trades. And they also get the audio call out from the Rift Herald being taken. So the rest of the Team Liquid squad will come to collect. Okay, top lane outer gonna drop down. Had to play defensively enough with Santorin showing up. So the wave gets pushed in, no problem. Santorin, I like this kind of, you know, shoves down the casters and gets out of the way. Lets the gold go over to tactical. Shout out every jungler who doesn't just greed the entire wave instantly, but actually lets people get the farm. It's a, it's a rare breed, but uh, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, you know, honestly, I'm actually okay with doing it nowadays too with, uh, you know, when you're building full tank, you're like, you, you don't really get to super tanky standpoints anymore. Be with the with the offensive itemization, I feel like there always comes a point in the game nowadays that no matter how tanky you've built, um, it's it's only going to be a, a one combo from a properly built offensive carry. FBI though walking towards core has the vision. Headbutt pull over the wall. A big stun combo. Rocket jump. He's going to try to run. Has ulti. Just lives. No summoners used. But now who he's got to be careful. Abstract's going to end. W's going to end. Finds a bit of a slow. A Buster shot puts Core JJ out and someone heal because who he's a move speed and no more chase happens. So hey, two ults and a single summoner spell is the cost of living. Not too bad. Now that said, though, it's really both teams who've made those kind of plays, forcing a single summoner out of the opposing AD carry. Rem wants to steal, but with Jensen walking up, going to have no chance to that one. And Dragon number one goes to Team Liquid, now tying that score. Yeah, well orchestrated by them. They even have Rift Herald on bottom side. They can finish up the last outer turret. That's when Olaf starts to cry. Once you have no outer turrets left, your solo laners ha have been getting abused, and it will continue if you give up. Um, you know, all this, you know, vision, you start to see it creep in. Vision lines uh, kind of move uh, step by step. Uh, and so it's very hard to to retake full vision control once, you know, all your outer turrets go down and the first line is in there because then your plays are telegraphed. It's very hard to answer. Closer comes down, though, through the tri brush uh, as uh, Team Liquid are also, you know, having Alistar hover. They should be able to, to make effective Rift Herald use. Safe recall. Yeah, I want to see when the Herald comes down, obviously. The printer's going to instantly crack any of those turrets. Right now, though, Azir gets the solo time, so can nearly kill it by himself. Centaurin is walking down. Corgi J the same. We'll see if they need to summon it. Yeah, he's going to. Makes it go down faster. They could probably shepherd it in a tier two as well, with only Syndra on this side of the map to defend. Uh, so a very easy crash down. You can actually stop outing this point. It's always going to die the car to the charge anyway. Jensen's still going to be there for the local gold because he tagged it. And now it's time for Tier 2, as Core JJ, Centaurin, and Tactical own this part of the jungle. They're going to pretty much hamper any rotations. So it should be a crash, and very likely, or at least very possibly, oh, Tactical, be careful. Tactical, he's going to have to ult to walk away, but the re-engage, they're going to find a slow, they're going to go for the engage, and they get the kill. Tactical stayed in the jungle, but the re-engage is FBI very, very low, barely staying alive. And this team fight's not going to live for much longer. Somebody's going to find a bit of a stun, a bit of a slow, but how far he's in the chase, gets the shot in the back, gets the kill. Santorin at 12 health, survives through Syndra as some they flash the wall to stay alive. So it is a one for one, just barely, but nearly two more kills on each side. And some they Alfari. basically drop. Yep, stun, Everfrost, big root, a lot of damage. Alfari is not gonna find the damage. Nearly is Jensen getting the kill, but again, everyone just slinking away. And it's still just a one for one at best for 100 Thieves, even with catching Tactical out on rotation through the jungle there. Team Liquid, fancy moves to get their counter kill here. Uh, look at this initiation onto Tactical. He, uh, he has ultimate, but Leona's slow actually zones him closer to Olaf and they burst him down. FBI lives with 
50 HP there. So Trista is actually bullied out of this fight. There's no damage left to back up someday. And Alfari wrapping around the side to pick up his extra kill onto Olaf. Um, he seemed like would actually still get the counter kill despite Zaya getting, uh, you know, pincered inside their own jungle. Ten I also note that the other Team Liquid carry here, Jensen had to flash over the back of the Dragon Pit because of the positioning of Ryoma. Syndra kind of uh, forcing him towards the, the front line there. Uh, you know, Jensen with kind of a heads up flash into the back of the pit so he can still auto on the front line, but not in range of the Syndra combo. All right. Well. Created some damage back and forth, but it is, I guess, heartening for these fans to see that they are able to earn some gold and uh, fight closely despite this 5,000 gold deficit. You'd love to see them shrink it over time, but at least they're holding on. Sad to see the cannon go away. FBI tried to set the one up, and uh, damage came across the minion line as well, which made it not go through. We'll see if yeah. um, that can come through. They need every penny, Freak, so every cannon uh -oh. definitely uh -oh. helps. Someday you are in a 1v3, gonna get for Core JJ, have it back, gonna uh, try to stride break away. A stun to Santor does decent damage, but he's still a very, very fast Udyr, it's not gonna matter here. Closer looking at Core. Core does not have ult, so Alistair is a very squishy and very killable tower. champion. That's gonna cost you a tower for that play, yeah, at is. least. Alfari, no teleport here. Doesn't matter though. He has the ultimate if things got really dicey for Team Liquid. And someday it looked like he really just wanted to make use of his Meganar before he expired there. But once he turns Mini, you know, that thing's about to time out. Even though they get Core JJ's Alistar ultimate down, Mini Nar with 50% HP. Um, as you're a fan of saying, Alistar pre level 6, not a champion. Uh, Mini Nar late game with 50% HP and just going starved, also yeah. not really a champion. So they have to back right off and, and just take that loss on the bottom half of the map where Alfari has just been cashing in on this gangplank. Executioners also picked up for him. So, you know, Olaf and Tristana won't be able to leech as much. It's just, uh, it looks like this gangplank is going to be so big uh, in keeping up these dragon stacking uh, neutral objectives for Team Liquid. Because they have full map control, they get the setup first, and it's going to be barrel chains out of the brush. You have to... Yeah you have to watch out for. Speaking of barrel chains, though, Alfari going for a somewhat unconventional build. I have not seen it in any league on this patch, but it is uh, a tankier one, right? It's it's mass sustained with the Ravenous Hydra. It's the, I'm blanking on the name of this item. Divine uh, Thunderer. Divine Thunderer, there we go, yeah. Uh, almost, like, literally every other player who has played Gangplank at 11.5 has gone at the three and gone crit. This is the one player who's going back to Bruiser there. Uh, maybe yeah. team comp uh, reasons with all the frontline threat that exists with, you know, Syndra and Trist. It's like, I, I don't want to get one shot, so we're going for something a bit tankier. Fair enough, yeah, it's, but yeah. As you're pointing out, the, the sustain is the is the main feature. Previously, previously, two patches ago, when people were building a lot of Divine Sunder, um, this was also on the Broken Sterix patch, so they would go Divine Sunder uh, and Sterix and be this super bruiser, you know, heavy kind of frontline gangplank that didn't have quite the explosions of, you know, the, the fully offensive, like you're talking about, builds that we've seen recently, but mm -hmm. the, the sustain in the frontline is so much heavier here with this build. And even with Sterics getting nerfed and Alfari making this adaptation, not getting the Sterics going with the uh, Ravenous for the extra sustain there, extra steel caps as well, uh, and being able to apply the Executioner's debuff, uh, also gonna pro provide extra utility for the team in addition to not being a vulnerable Tristana reset target. Yep, definitely useful. So, Mythic's coming through across the board now as finally Alistair completes his, and we're just waiting for Tactical to finish. It could be Kraken, could be Gale Force. I think either one can make sense. I like Gale Force because he has to dodge the uh, Leona so often. I think that would be the optimal yeah. choice in this game. Uh, don't think they need help killing Frontline, considering you have several other carries. Easy jump back for FBI. Times it around the time you would get stunned and says, okay, yeah, I guess I didn't get anything out of that one. Whatever. Moving back, though. Yeah, Tactical's main feature of this game has not been damage output. It has been survive. get every button you can to survive. So I agree. Well, uh, Okay, good ult to stay alive for Tactical. The flash, he's not going to follow, but now here comes the re-engage. Big stun's coming to the front line. Centaurin has to run away, though, as well as the ulti was popped. Ryoma TP's onto the feathers, and that means he dies. That TP also sucked, and now it's Nar <laughs> trying to go mega. Has to be careful. Transforms. Ult's onto three, but it's not going to matter. The shot's going to kill. He's going to burn down the corrupting potion of all things. And 100 Thieves lose that fight 2-0.
Yeah, Alfari's able to get one more Q off. Freak, I thought those teleports were different people. I thought the Someday one was the front one and the Ryomo one was the back one. But surprise, surprise, you know, Team Liquid happy to take that kill onto Ryoma as the Syndra pops up in front of them. Alfari gonna zone while they finish up the Baron. Okay, Team Liquid in a huge lead now in this game. An easy pickup on the Baron. They're gonna look for stuns on Alfari. It's good damage. They won't tanky. even kill him. He's tanky. The shovel brings back one. Closer could be attacked as well. What a great bait by Alfari, and it's 10 to 2 for Team Liquid. Steel caps on, Divine Sunder. That is not a Tristana reset. He is able to eat his oranges, flash out, push with the Baron afterwards, and Team Liquid want to end this one quick. Yeah, they're going to knock down at least the inhibitor turret, it looks like. Maybe the inhibit itself will stay up. Depends how aggressive TL want to play this one. How far is he able to walk up? And when did these respawn? They're still only in a 3v4 or a 3v5 as well, Zaya is recalled, so it is only four on the offense. And that means TL will not even get the turret itself. The defense was enough to push him back, and that's fine. They got four kills, they got a Baron. Reset, buy your items. Gale Force does get through the tactical. Good choice there. Keep him uh, <laughs> yeah. alive. Yeah. He knows. He wants every button he can possibly use yeah. to be able to survive this dive from 100 Thieves. Um, and honestly, with with how well everybody else is getting fed, uh, you know, Alfari and Jensen can put out the majority of the damage for the team fight, no problem. Well, 10,000 gold puts Team Liquid in a good position here. If 100 Thieves lose, they are exactly fourth seed. They are just there to wait to see who's going to be first, who's going to be their first round opponent. With Team Liquid, okay, Alfari, round two. Stunned, stunned again, stunned a third time. This is probably going to kill him. They got him. They got a shutdown, and 750 <laughs> went to FBI. So he's now, you know, halfway into the last whisper. Yeah, we definitely have some hope here now for 100 Thieves. Phantom Dancer doing some work there, getting off uh, plenty of extra attack speed. Here's another look at the attempt onto Tactical. This time around, they aren't able to get there. And then you see them back off. Team Liquid wait to see who's the tele who the teleport is, much like we were thinking. And actually, surprise, surprise, it is the Syndra on the front line. So they immediately kill off Syndra. And then you can follow up, even though Someday gets a decent NAR ultimate. It's while they're in retreat and they already lost their mid laner. So there's no damage behind the NAR ultimate. Team Liquid just runs straight ahead. And uh, as you know, uh, he escapes this time, but the, the live occurrence is not uh, the same story there for Alfari. Yep. This also turns into, of course, you know, Team Liquid so much map pressure, and it's not going to change kind of how they play the game too much. But uh, now with Baron buff, they just get to, oh, here we go. Try again. Corjade nearby. Set Torn very fast. Thank you, Phase Rush. Just zipping right out there. He's going to stay alive. The Azir turret goes down. and. The siege can continue. Red Bull Baron, 15 seconds left. 3,600 gold lead through that. 1,500 of that being Baron itself. So even more money earned over the top. Is it six turrets to one? Two turrets to one. Ryoma nearly dead. A big stun keeps the whole team alive. It keeps the siege from going too much better. But FBI's got to feel worried about the fact that Jensen could always go for the shuffle. Without FBI having flash, it's very tough to go for that one and feel comfortable doing so. And and yeah, you can see Korja playing far enough up. Santori not gonna play in melee range as well. Means you really can't contest these minions. That cannon stays alive. Quick clear for Rayama. Only gets a couple of minions though. Who he wants to hex flash in. Doesn't find it just yet. But it's a 5v5 win for when the fight gets started. 10,000 gold makes it very hard for Thieves to want to. He's Mega Nar. They've got very little time left to go for this play. If you're gonna do it ever, it's during Mega. Unlikely to be successful though. So they're gonna wait and see if anyone overextends. They will not. 100 Thieves team fight power just dropped by a quarter. And it's time to back off yet again. Zahibitor is going to go to Team Liquid. There's no reason to fight this one. It, whoa, that is too far up. That is too far up. Sunday going to set up for a pretty easy engage, but maybe it was a bait. They're going to find Santorin, and it was a bait. They find one for one, but Sunday has to get over the wall. Jensen going to find the second kill, and now who he just has to walk away. Where am I get the stun? But he's still got to get away from everyone else. FBI is alive, but just that. It's still a fight that goes Team Liquid's way. 4v3, pushing in for more of the base. Yeah, 100 Thieves are kind of forced to fight front to back, but if, you're, if your Mega Nar expires there and you're just mini on the front line, they lose out on that front line. You saw how it was then easy to focus closer for Team Liquid. And even though Santorin goes down, Team Liquid are happy to just fight front to back. If your mini Nar is there, there's not real uh, front line, and they're going to win that race every single time, despite Tactical being a bit behind on the, on the Zaya from the early stages now actually has surpassed FBI in levels 
uh, with the extra, uh, you know, team play that they've been able to get off and caught up in items, you know, extra BF sword on top of the two item power spike there. So uh, Jensen doing a lot of the heavy lifting, though, level 16 Azir with the uh, Nashers build, just kind of working right through them. And Team Liquid, they will easily be able to pick up their, their uh, you know, soul point dragon here. But honestly, Freak, I don't think we have to run this game all the way to the dragon soul with three inhibitors down. It's yeah. always so easy to end a game just by going up, up into the enemy's base, just grouping yep. up and watching the minions uh, do a lot of the work. Yes, indeed. So Team Liquid, obviously, well in driver's seat. I always get a little bit nervous whenever I kill three inhibitors because I'm like, okay, we are just flooding in like 700 gold per minute through the minion waves that we're not getting and you're getting. So it's like XP and, and gold keep going up and up and up and up. So it's like snapshots of gold difference, right? It's 11K. If you do not actively take Baron or actively push the base, that gold lead just shrinks. Obviously, TL can make that up. They can make the place happen. The Baron is practically a formality in 20 seconds, but you have to keep checking those boxes or your lead goes away on its own. <laughs> yeah. Uh, big tip here, uh, don't five-person disconnect after you take uh, in yes. three inhibitors. That's, <laughs> that's my recommendation. <laughs> that's when taking three inhibitors can be bad. <laughs> Otherwise, five members are connected for Team Liquid and they are gonna force on Baron. Here we go, Udyr. And the Zaya and the Azir. An easy one here. Alistar actually going back to his side of the jungle. Althari, pretty defensive there as well. So 100 Thieves can walk in, but not walk in in time. Baron is indeed claimed. Is there even going to be a re-engage? Oh, Cordero is behind you. So who he has to lock him up? The knock back from Ryoma keeps him alive. The flash pulver is still going to land. Jensen forced a flash out of the pit. Someday walks in. Ulti's going to come across on a one champion. FBI jumps in and Malphite is probably going to die for this one. But Tactical's going to drop. It's a two for zero. Who he's on the front line. FBI will indeed die. Did not have to go for that play. Ryoma now in the back line as well. The battle lines have been flipped. And now suddenly the front line's going to drop. It started two for zero. And then it went Five straight for Team Liquid. The inhibs are dead. The minions are inside the base, and Team Liquid will take this victory. They will improve to 12 and 6. 100 Thieves will be our fourth seeded team in the mid season showdown, and TL hope that EG can take a win so that Team Liquid can fight for first. Congratulations to Mortal. Team Liquid. <laughs> <laughs> Almost had it there, Freak. Almost had it. <laughs> TL though, TL though, they finished strong, unlike Freak nope. <laughs> in this game. And uh, we'll head with confidence here into the MSI qualifying uh, uh, playoff bracket that we have. So congratulations here. Uh, you know, nicely done from start to finish, honestly, uh, especially with the way that they reacted, with some of the information they gathered in the early game, seeing closer head over for the quintessential 100 Thieves dive on bottom side. Even though FBI and Huhi were running this Tristana Leona bottom lane down there, playing it really well, super aggressive into the Alistar, uh, Zaya taking full advantage, with the kind of telegraph jungle move, uh, Santorin answers on top side, and, and it's a good response here from Team Liquid to actually control so yes. much of that mid game. Yeah, really, really, really well done. They they survived a, a really hellish bot lane. It was impressive for them to live, to survive through all that stuff. At the end of the day, though, 100 Thieves could not get anything more done off of the bot lane focus. Uh, they own the head-to-head -head against Dignitas, which is why they are guaranteed fourth seed, despite having uh, you know the same record, basically. On Team Liquid's side, if Cloud9 wins, TSM owns the head-to-head, -head, so Team Liquid is just third. TSM gets second, it's over, it's over and done with. If Immortals upsets Cloud9, three-way tie is not broken. Cloud9 TL is the first round. Winner of that fights TSM for first seed. So that is the road how TL gets the number one seed into the playoff bracket, is the Immortals up to over C9, and then make that road to make that happen. If you are a fan of uh, tiebreakers in general, you want that game five to go Immortals' way. It's going to be fun to watch for either way. Upper bracket for both these teams. We will see more of them in the midseason showdown, and we'll see which team will represent the LCS at MSI in a month's time or so. But that's going to do it for us. Uh, for me and Kobe, we are done casting the regular season. But after the break, we'll hear from Santorin in the Verizon Postgame interview. So stay tuned for that.